Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we will take a look at a few really cool nodes and easy VEX functions. I did my best to explain and comment on all of the nodes in this setup, so I really hope it will be easy to understand even if you are a complete beginner in Houdini. As always, huge thanks to everyone who support me by liking, commenting, on my videos as well as purchasing my project files. I'm really grateful to every one of you and your support drives me to create more tutorials, explore more of the cool stuff that Houdini can do. So yeah, thanks a lot to every one of you. So here we are in Houdini and let me know if you also love to organize your setups in like super, super neat way and I see that we don't have like 90 degrees angle here, so it, uh, it just like an OCD or something. Um, but yeah, and uh, in general, if you have any thoughts, uh, recommendations, suggestions, anything, YouTube algorithm really loves your comments and when you are commenting, it, it kind of pushes my videos to more viewers, so I would really appreciate if you leave me a uh, Leave me a comment. All right, so let me show you. Uh, first of all, we obviously need a source of our strands. And here, let me just quickly duplicate our line wave node. I will remove the rotations. It will be easier for you to understand what's going on there. All right, so what we have here is our tiny little circle here. Yeah, we can remove the normals and divisions here i link that to my controls node number of splines set to 2000 so we have 2000 level points here if you are not familiar with the controls null i use it uh, in every of my houdini setups so basically i can just write down parameters and it will be just like easier for me to understand where and what was. So here, yeah, number of splines is basically um, divisions of the circle. And it's primitive type set to polygon, orientation Z explain, and I scaled it down. So then we drop a sort node, and here I want to sort the points in a random way. I will explain why we really need to do that a little bit later. Spoiler, it is needed for proper coloring. And then we drop an attribute for angle. So what we need to do here, one thing is absolutely crucial, that we need to set up our normals pointing outwards. And here I can basically, let me bypass these two nodes and I can copy to points. Oh, actually, maybe, yeah, leave the, the transform node here. Um, let me also decrease the number of splines to something like 200 maybe. Yeah, and when I copy to points, you can see that we have our splines pointing outwards. If I remove this line or command out this line, this is what happens. So yeah, we want our copies to follow the normals and normals should be pointing outwards. Um, then prim, prim ID, just a custom variable pointing to ptnum because we want to store our IDs of points. Uh, then the P scale is set to one and this is to make our center or affected by noise, line surfaces or areas. Uh, I want them to appear thicker than the, the rest. And then we are just coloring it to black. So that, that's it. For the lines itself, have a line, points, again, linked to my controls node and spline resolution is set to 300. So we have 300 points in this line. Here you can see it. Um, basically, the lower the number of points in the line, the less details you will have in your noise. So you may start with, I don't know, 100 and then go insanely crazy as we usually do on this channel. So then um, I dropped a bend node and bend node basically creates the shape of our sphere. So here you can see the parameters. I kind of like uh, the trial and error here. So I set the bend to be minus 17.7, then check to preserve the volume and enable the length scale. And capture is set to capture origin set to Z axis minus 0.1. So this gives me fairly correct sphere in the end. When I attach the band and attribute wrangle to the copy to points, I have my sphere, cool looking sphere. So now let's go and create some noise. 
And this time we will be using wops. So drop a point wop, and I'll explain you what we have here. So we have our turbulent noise, which is yeah, just just turbulent noise, and we have signature set 3D noise noise type. I've set that to sparse convolution node frequencies. 0.533, amplitude is set to 2, roughness to 0.7, attenuation to 1, and turbulence to 6. Then I drop an add node and I feed the position to the turbulent noise and I also feed the position to the add and that's how we add the noise to the original position. Also I dropped a divided constant node and I dropped a time and I attach the time divided by, in my case it's 12 but it also like set to this controls node and then I plug it into the offset of the turbulent noise and then I plug that all into position of the out. So let me visualize it. That's our noise. You can play with these scales here and there, but yeah, these are the, the values that I used. So complete setup for the WOP is super simple and it looks basically like this. So we have our points that are kind of like noisy and displaced, but we surely need something that will determine which part of the, in this case, sphere will be affected by the noise. And previously we used attribute transfer and it was working great, but now I discovered this node mask from geometry, which seems to me a bit more versatile and easier to use than attribute transfer. So basically what do we have here? We get our copy to points and we drop a mask from geometry and then we drop a in my case it's a torus and i have animated many of these parameters so the animation looks like this we scale and go up and then we scale down and we also go up so basically this is the animation we want in our mask from geometry, we have a remap. In this case, the radius is set to 1.3. By default, it will give us something like this. So you can see how the mask actually works. I really wanted this gradient to be even more smoother. I added attribute blur, which, yeah, blurs the, the mask attribute. So here you drop an attribute blur, attach the mask to the blur. In the attributes you specify that you want to blur the, the attribute called mask. Blurring duration set to 50, pin border points unchecked, influence type proximity. Um, that's it, yeah. And then I attach a color node and color type is set to ramp from attribute, and attributes set to mask and range is 0 to 1. So that's how I can visualize and tweak the look of the, of the mask. So now this is the one of the most interesting parts and this function is used in so many cool projects and I just want to share it with you and don't be afraid of this little wax. So here we should create two variables, assign values. Our first vector is our first input point position. So it's basically all the points from this one and the vector pt2 is position of the points here in our noisy and because the point count is the same between the initial and noisy we can linearly interpolate between positions of these points so function lerp is a linear interpolation function and it needs the first and second position and the scale of interpolation so the scale of interpolation is basically our mask and mask has values from 0 to 1 black parts are 0 and white parts are 1 and that means that if we have our mask let's say here on the frame 150 it's here in the middle and here in the middle it's 1 so these parts will be affected by the noise and these parts here which are black, which are zero, will not have any sort of noise and will remain from the PT1, which is our state of default sphere. Let me display the this attribute wrangle and you can see that we have this exact interpolation. And as our mask grows and goes up, the interpolation, the lerp function also works and checks every, every frame which points should be affected or which points should not. So this is a extremely 
useful function where you want to quickly let's say show one part of the mesh being affected by the noise and then you can just like go back to the to the normal state or something basically interpolation makes it easy to transform or morph between different setups the, the only thing is that the point number of first and second geometries should be the same so after this first attribute wrangle i've dropped another one and i'm also using the lerp function and in this example i am linearly interpolating the p scale from one to three and again i'm using the mask so these parts that are noisy will appear thicker than the ones that are not affected by noise so basically that's it and now we just need to make this looking good and pretty so let's drop a color and we can ramp from attribute attribute should be prim id that's why we specified it here in the attribute wrangle so prim id and remember i told you about the sort so let's see what happens if i disable that you can see as we are driving our color from the prim id which is ptnum we basically start from zero here and we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, and till in this case 2000. And this is why we need to randomize. So the range also here it's uh, actually yeah, not 2000 but 200 and range is 8 to 200 because I have my spline num or number of splines um, parameter copied here. Only after color we can resample and in resampling I set the length to be 0.02 and treat polygons as subdivision curves. It makes the curves a bit smoother so they don't have like these like, these straight edges. And after that there is also an attribute wrangle and this is one of the coolest parts of this tutorial. So it's very easy and here I basically explained that. So we multiply the color value by mask attribute value to achieve a smooth gradient from black, which is our like primary color of the sphere, where the mask is zero, till the full color where the mask is one. So let's say the color is one, so the, the spline is, is red, and we multiply it by mask. So if we multiply it by one, we get the one. If we multiply by zero, we get the zero, so the black. So if I display this one, you will see that we have sort of a smooth gradient here. It's difficult to see here, but we basically are done with the setup here. And let me show you how it looks uh, rendered in Redshift. So to render it out, you will obviously need a material. So let me set up material. Here you can see we drop a particle attribute lookup, a risk point attribute node, um, attribute name is CD, um, what's there. So I up the roughness and that's it, plugged into the redshift material. And this one is for the backplate. We also, yeah, here we have a backplate. Then we add this redshift material here in the line wave render tab, redshift obj. Uh, we click to the tabs called strands and we check the render objects as strands. Strand type should be cylinder, default scale should be 1 and global scale multiplier, it really depends on the number of your splines. So in my case for 2000 splines I needed global scale multiplier set to 0.004. Then you also will need a camera which you can create by clicking here new camera and um, yeah, that's basically it. Here will be your redshift camera camera all cool and easy so let's fire up render view now here you can see that everything's working all good maybe let's readjust the camera to something like this and now let's up the count for example we want i don't know let's say 1000 just because it will be easier for us to see and yep here we have it here i have two redshift lights let me show you yeah basically one is from this side and the second one is located somewhere here and i also have an hdri here so yeah i think that's it for today guys thanks a lot for watching and i really hope this tutorial was useful if it was don't forget to leave this video a like and don't forget that all of my tutorials have project files available for you to download it's the best way how you can support me in my path of creating these tutorials for you so thanks a lot and i'll be back very soon bye